So one thing that's been bothering me for a while now is that when Luna finally was, she was no longer Nightmare Moon. She became, you know, a normal pony again. She was a normal pony again. I mean, she had a horn, she had wings, but she was normal. No magic celestial hair, nothing like that. And we didn't see her again for a long time. Yep. When she finally came back, uh, she's got celestial hair. She's super powerful. She even almost looks like a different color. Like she's a different yeah, pony. Well, when you see her again, it's night and True. she's outside. So she's going to be, you know, everyone, even Twilight looks darker when it's nighttime. That is one thing. We've never seen Luna out during the day with Celestia hair. Only at night does she have Celestia hair. Uh, the one time well, we saw her out during the day, well. she had normal hair. This is not entirely true, right? You see, because the only time you see her during the day, period, right, is the very first time you see her when she unnightmare moons, right? And when she immediately unnightmare moons, it's still night. It's not day until Celestia shows up mere seconds later. And but she I does not out, have magical hair in those few moments before the sun rises. But in those few moments, we don't really, as we, we don't see her in her regular form again until the sun has already come up with Celestia coming out of it. Luna. Plus, I mean, we already know there's the, the period between the two times, like when they change the guard. I mean, she has the Celestia hair when she changes places with uh, Celestia during the wedding. Yeah, but that's nighttime. It's at dusk, and Celestia has normal hair. Celestia's hair is magical 100% of the time. Now, that's the interesting thing. You could think that maybe Luna has her powerful, powerful hair during the night and Celestia during the day. Except that Celestia, multiple times we see her at night, like during the Grand Galloping Gala, and she has the normal wavy magical hair the entire time and all of her powers. Except when she gets smacked down. So when she gets smacked down, her hair stops moving like that. And when she's inside of that chrysalis, her hair is also not moving. Maybe, that's, maybe it's not whether it's day or night that has Luna's magical hair, you can consider that at the moment she first appears in episode two, she just got smacked down. That is true. But then it's later during the day when she comes back on the chariot after they've sorted all the business out, she still doesn't have magical still hair. Still doesn't have magical hair. Maybe it's because she was recently smacked down. But no, Celestia's hair becomes magical again very soon after unsmacked smacking. Yep. In fact, you see it. As soon as Chrysalis is beaten, Celestia's like, thanks, everything's good now and she's fine. In fact, that burn mark on her horn is already gone. So she probably just went. There's also now the issue of Cadence. Cadence never had the magic hair until she cast that crazy spell with shining armor and beat Chrysalis, and then she had the uh, Avatar state. I hair. did not investigate her uh, magical hair. I didn't so, even realize she had magical hair at any time. So she has no magical hair at any point until they do that spell where the music plays and they turn heads and they assume that pose. And then they form a heart shape and then they pop everyone out with the shield reforming. During that entire scene, she has Celestia hair and never again. Oh, uh, never again. Maybe it's just, you know, the magic was making her hair magic-y. Just so, like, I mean, you know, when they're using the elements of harmony, everyone's hair goes all, whoa, and their eyes go all, bang, right? Well, their eyes do, but... You're casting a magic spell, all your shit's gonna nah, be Nah, but their up. hair doesn't do that particular well, thing. Well, you can't really see it because it's all sort of behind a rainbow. Oh, yeah, you can. There's plenty of shots with it. More to the point, like shining armor and all these people who are just as involved in these spells when they happen... That does not happen. That particular kind of hair seems to be mm -hmm. part and parcel. You have to be a pegacorn, and you have to be using your god powers. I guess. I don't know. Or you can just go buy some sparkles at the craft store. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, while the hair is doing that, it still is normal hair because Pipsqueak like, grabs Luna's hair at one point, and it just pulls in like normal hair. Like It doesn't burn him or anything. Yeah, nobody ever... I don't think there was any question of whether it was not hair, right? It's hair. It's yeah, but it's hair with stars in it. All right. Though, speaking of stars, so... Maybe it's a conscious thing that they do, right? It's on purpose. It's like, you know, you just got smacked down. It's like, oh, I can't keep up my hair glamour. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I'm awake again. Oh, shit, my hair. Ah. Now, like if you, if you were like, you know, some really prissy princess... Well, excuse me, princess. And you had magic powers. You could use them to keep your hair going. So, like the, the most we've seen the uh, the powers of one of these princesses being used, these pegacorns, is when Nightmare Moon is going full on Nightmare Moon. And when she's doing that, every time she takes like a form of a blob or turns into something, like even those shadow bolts, it's the same substance as her hair. 
that hair almost embodies like that aspect of power, like the way when they're when they are the goddess, they have this hair, and when they're not, they're just normal. Well, I mean, in Nightmare Moon's case, right? I think it's sort of a vampiric situation. You know how like when a vampire turns into a bat, his cape sort of becomes bat wings. And when he turns into a wolf, he sort of goes like, hmm, with the cape, right? So her hair Maybe is basically life. like the cape, right? So it's like when she turns into something, it's like the hair is the cape, and then it kind of... So maybe it's like in Dungeons & Dragons. If a sword is plus three or greater, it automatically glows. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing that bothers me But wouldn't me Twilight's about sword be plus three? <laughs> or not? I don't think she is. The biggest thing she's ever done that wasn't also using the elements of harmony, you know, some external force. And while she is the element of harmony, they also need the elements of harmony to do these spells. So it's not just her. That crown does something. But otherwise, the greatest thing she can ever do is either her psycho avatar state, which again, she still doesn't have the hair, or when she took out the Ursa Minor. I was going to say, that was like the taking most out magic the bear. She ever right. exemplified and used well, and in she one She didn't shot. really have magical hair at that time. Nope. But, you know. But Luna, when she's Nightmare Muna, you know, Wuna, I, I think Wuna is the technical term for her without her magic hair. Wuna, Luna, Nightmare Muna. <laughs> so. You just really wanted to use your rhyming. <laughs> so. When she is Nightmare Moon, she's wearing regalia, different regalia. She's got this kind of like helmet on. She's got a different brace. And when she's defeated, Breast that's plate. smashed. It's smashed and smoking on the floor next to Luna. We never see it again. But even then, even during the day, she's still wearing her little black crown and her normal bracer. So it's only that when she's Nightmare Moon. So I wonder if that was the source of Nightmare Moon's powers. I doubt it. <laughs> So what was it then? Well, because I mean, when she she immediately got smashed, right? Did she immediately have the small breastplate on? Yes. Yeah. So it was like hiding under there. Maybe it was, <laughs> or maybe it transformed with her. And what about the helmet? Yeah. See, what's up with that? Is like it, maybe it's not actually clothing if it's right. But we saw it on the ground, smashed. Right. Well, I mean, if you're big and then suddenly you're small and you just got hit, right? It's like you got to break through someone's armor to do damage. <laughs> Right? So if they laid the big hit on, yeah, the armor is going to get smashed. So it raises the question of how did Luna become Nightmare Moon? Was it, did she find something? Was it those four fucking stars? She just didn't have any friends because it was nighttime. <laughs> so I guess she has four friends. They never really, we don't know what happened with that. I mean, the book says the four stars laid in her escape. The stars will aid in her escape. We see the four stars move in. The four stars clearly let her out. No one talks about that again. No one's looking for these four stars. I think the four stars are gone, right? It's like there were just four stars hanging out there, and they were sort of moving in. Right? Well, they aided in her escape. They well, let her see, out. that's the that's the thing. It's so vague, aiding in the escape, right? So maybe the stars were just fucking stars, and she did something to bring the star. She needed the stars to you know to come close to get their power to escape, but it just took a thousand years for the stars to get there you know she couldn't like grab the stars right away so she would like the stars were just tools for her to escape but then with. there's still the question of how did she become nightmare moon and should, could she become nightmare moon again it was thou who unleashed the powers of harmony upon us and took away our dark powers and that was a good thing right because she already i mean she already even now being good has her bat wing guards with their like batty kind of ears, she has her fla blazing chariot of lightning death. That's just style. It is just style. But where, so those guards—is that a costume? Because it was Nightmare Night. Uh, it could have been. It's could have been. I mean, those look exactly like regular old palace guards, and they could. The only question thing, a part of them that could might have not been a costume. Bat was wings and their bat, ears. Right, they had different ear, and their bat wings could have just been. You could just cover your wing with like a basically a sleeve. Could you though, and still fly? If you put a sleeve on a bird, they can't fly. Depends on the sleeve. One thing we do know... Bird's not a Pegasus either. Is, you know, we always debate about pe these Pegacorns. You know, Pegasus powers, unicorn powers, Earth Pony, all that stuff. We know for sure that Pegacorns have all the powers of a Pegasus because she well, sits duh. on that. But she can sit on the cloud and she can make lightning come out just like Rainbow Dash can. Duh. Well, you never know. Maybe we didn't know. I think anyone in Pony can make lightning come out of the cloud as long as the cloud is down there and they can get it. I don't think they can because non-Pegasus ponies fall right through the clouds. <laughs> Pegasus ponies can walk on clouds. Like they can't even interact with them. I'm pretty sure Twilight can like cast a magic at the cloud to make it 
lightning. Ah, yes, using mm. magic. The point was, but that yeah, you, if you try to make it by punching the cloud, your your fist is gonna go through it. So unless it's not you're a pegacorn or, or a pegasus. Right. Well, anyone anyone who's got peg obviously can do all the peg <laughs> things. It's like, yeah, I got these wings, but I fall through clouds. It's like, no, duh. It's not even. Why is that even a question? Ah, but the flying animals can also do the pegasus power. They can land on clouds. Well, I don't think a flying animal can make lightning come out of it. Well, maybe they just never tried. It's not big enough. Maybe they never tried. It can't hit the cloud hard enough. (laughs) (laughs) Right? But I'm sure that, like, you know, you can get, like, some birds to help push clouds around if you want.